What? <laughs> You're gay, bro. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome to episode uh, nine. Bill Elliott, son. Lake I, Speed Spam. I think I think it's the number nine. Hell, I don't know. Well, I stopped counting at one. <laughs> Throwback past one, I don't give a shit about. Throwback to last week's episode if you want to know what the hell he's talking about. But oh, we're right. here and we're going to do it. That's right. We're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to do it. Hey, this is going to be a good one. Oh, I'm, I'm fired up because we finally got lined up Steve. Mr. Nasty. Nasty. Mr. Steven. Nasty. There you go. I remember when he wouldn't come out the truck to run the go kart A main, Stephen Nasty. But hey, he does now. When that boy lines up, he's got the sickness. Yeah, he got the sickness. Hey, <laughs> everybody knows the sickness. Hey, so we finally got him lined up. We've been trying for a couple of episodes, and um, we've been kind of pissing down our leg on that deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we're not we're not much of uh, we're know, not very good planners. Yeah, you know. <laughs> We're we're we're, uh, we're spontaneous cats around here. Yeah. So uh, we got Stephen on the horn, lined up, ready to go. But we're not going to get to that yet. But what we are going to get to is who this show is brought to you by, and uh, that is. Oh, and you don't even have your freaking. Uh, oh, go ahead, do it. Oh, you know why? Because if you want a good time, you need to call eight six three nine four 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 two one four. Because guess who that is? <sighs> That's Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Hey, I'm proud of you. That's the first. It took us nine damn episodes, <laughs> and my boy finally remembered their number. They hey. could they could have made it like one eight hundred Bull or some <laughs> shit, but here we are. Hey, no, but Raging Bull still waiting on that free motor. <laughs> still waiting on, still waiting on that ambassador <laughs> hookup. But it's cool. They're here. Hey, they're thorough. Yeah, they are. They're loyal. Loyal. Hey, you smart. Hey, the, stick with us. You need to ride this train, Mr. Brandon Bull, Mr. Brian Bull. Hey, hopefully we sell them an engine or two. It might work out in their favor to throw an engine on that damn buggy. Hey, but. they might ride this train all the way until we get 100 views. If they keep if they keep riding the train. Hey, 100 <laughs> views, that's definitely worth a motor. Because, <laughs> I mean, one out of 100 people about to buy a motor. Oh, you, you better know it's it. science. You better know it. Read a book. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, damn. <laughs> hey, I mean. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> so, hey, let's talk about a few things here. So, I mean, it's been tough since COVID, right? Yeah. You know, like, I mean, motorsports has kind of been like hitting me. I mean, and when I say motorsports, I don't mean NASCAR running three days a week because nobody gives a shit. I mm. mean, really. mm and I mean, shout out. I mean, Briscoe's out there doing his thing, open wheel boy, like a couple other guys. But like, let's talk about the real deal. Mm -hmm. Like, what I think's cool is like, how about Kyle Larson? Young money. Dude, Asian buddy. Yeah. Dude, he's out there. Like, I think he won 25 or 24 out of 32 star. I mean, average finish of like 1.8 against the baddest. Yeah. Hey, your bad chip. Like, that's how, I, I mean, you're bad. Kyle's out there doing things. And, and let's talk about this. So Kyle's out there winning everything. Right. Sometimes you get on Facebook, you can't even tell if it's a new feature winner picture or yesterday's picture. It's Kyle Larson and his old lady shotgunning a beer. And then you got, and then you scroll down three more statuses and you see the Chaz. Well, I don't even know what the Chaz is. It's that douchebag that I sent you that I always talk about the Larsonites and how he hates Larson and Larson. Oh, I thought overrated. that guy was like handicapped. He might be. But something's wrong with him. He, yeah, he's but got either a fucking way, screw loose. Yeah, I mean, tell the Chaz to show me one. He don't want these hands. <laughs> so, what's up, Chaz? How about this? If Chaz got a problem with Larson, come get these hands, Chaz. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> he don't want it. We can schedule that. I hey. mean, he can... Me, how I look at the Chaz, look, like he's like, what's the dude, not Timmy in the wheelchair on South Park, but what's the dude in the arm things? Uh, is it Butters? No, no it's not he's Butters. one of them handicapped. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, Jimmy. No, Jimmy. Like, hey, Jimmy, not Timmy. But either way, that's how I look at Chaz, the Chaz. I can't believe we're even talking about him. He's done. 
Chaz dead. Hey, you know what the Chaz can do? And he can kiss my dick. For re- if I get the chance, he's going to. Yeah, you damn right. I got hey, time for an interview. Hey, but what I'm saying is, is like Larson's out there blessing the short track world right now. Right. I watched a race last night. It was Larson, Sweet, Shots. And that was like, to me, I'm like, that is the closest thing to the modern day Swindell, Kinzer, Wolfgang. Like, I was like, man. I'm lucky to be alive to see, like, I was, ha- like, I don't like the Patriots, but I'm glad I got to see Tom Brady do his thing. Right. I don't like the Lakers, but I'm glad I got to see Kobe do his thing. Right. Like, I don't like the Yankees, but I'm glad, I'm, damn, I don't like the Yankees. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Jeter. He's what you're all of them. For. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hate the Yankees. But watching Larson Sweet and Shots throw slider after slider for 25 Gs at Lernerville two nights ago. If that don't get you going, I don't know what does. I really don't know what does get you going. If that don't get you going, swipe up yeah, and go on about your business. No, go watch some bullshit. I don't even know what. Go watch the Chaz. Yeah, go watch Talladega Happy Hour. Like, the <laughs> dumbest shit I can imagine. Like, it is uh, what Kyle Larson is doing right now. And, and to see him against Donnie Schatz, the posse. And Pennsylvania against, posse to see him against Brad Sweet and the, like the best in the business. Like to me, I'm like, thank you. And, and, and I, I tweeted about this the other day. Like as a racer, as a race fan, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, thank you for allowing us to see this show. Like this is great. Like, oh, and what, what's NASCAR doing in this meantime, putting lights on the back bumpers of shit at Bristol. Like, Good job, NASCAR. Y- you guys put street glow. Y'all out there fast and the furious. And, and Kyle Larson's out there lighting up the Pennsylvania posse. And out there running the outlaws at Lernerville and Knoxville. Like, it, there's a difference between racing and racers. Like, and what Kyle Larson's doing right now is, like, everything. Like, it is beautiful. It is – I'm so appreciative as a race fan. Like, everybody thinks they're the baddest. Everybody – Likes to pound their chest. I mean, if you can't sit back and appreciate what Kyle Larson is doing for racing right now, he took a negative and turned it into the biggest positive for short track racing. Yeah, he said some dumb shit on iRacing to his buddy. Everybody does it. Everybody yeah. says some dumb shit from time to time, but Kyle Larson took his medicine, loaded up his sprint car, and took it to every dirt track in the country and has put on – a clinic. See, back to the eye racing thing. I've been thinking about getting rid of eye racing because I have said some things to a ten year old's mother in the past three days that I thought never would have came out of I my get, mouth. I get emotional. Like I get on there. It's sometimes like, cause you be ra- like, you know, it's about your safety rating, about your eye rating, about whatever, and then you know you run forty, fifty laps. You be, you know, I got my little toddler. Coming out like daddy, like fixing my iPad. I'm like, shut up, son. I'm running second. God <laughs> damn it. Like, you do whatever, and then, you know, bang. And then you get a 4X or an 8X, and you're like, shit. Now I got to race three more races to fix it. The, and then and then this kid's like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get into you. Like, fuck you. I hate you. Your whole family. Like, y'all need to get off. Our, like, and then you get emotional. Like, this guy said something negative to his buddy, just like, mic check. One, two, can you hear me? Right. And lost, you know, McDonald's target. Lost his life. And, and like, what'd he do? He didn't crawl into a hole and die. You know what he did? He's like, all right, man, this sucks. Yeah. What he did is he goes, called his Paul Silva, a.k.a. Jesus. Finley Farms. You know, tar- like the Tarleton family. Like, hey, man, let's get that sprint car ready. Let's go racing. And what did Kyle do? Because Kyle's a racer. He ain't like some of these NASCAR guys lose their ride and then you never hear them again. Like, they go away. They do so. Like, Kyle lost his life. Like, lost everything. His cup ride, his air, everything. And he's like, all right, then. Unloaded his sprint car at the baddest tracks in the planet against the baddest dudes and threw down. And then put down in the like an ungodly streak of wins and top three. I mean, 
like somebody posted the other day, like Kyle Larson's last twenty four races, it's like one 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 two 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 three one 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 two two. Like, like it looked like some bullshit from like when people are trying to read old stock market shit, and it's all zero one. It looked like when you go run NASCAR Thunder on rookie mode. Yeah, he's out there flexing, <laughs> yeah, like doing his thing, and I'm like, God, like one. It like I said, I'm thankful. Made me happy. Like, thank God. Because I always harp on, like, man, we lost Dave Blaney. We lost Mike Bliss. We lost Cole Witt, who I thought was the first Kyle Larson. We lost all these guys from NASCAR. And, and J.J. Yaley, Josh Wise. Yeah. We lost some hitters. And, and, like, the world didn't get to experience their talent, didn't get to showcase what they could do. And you could see what Kyle Larson's doing, and it's like, and thank God for flow racing, dirt on dirt. Um, I, I can't think of all the names, but the people yeah. who are who are broadcasting this, where we can watch and view this every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like uh, midget week, sprint week, PA sprint, week, or like it's just every like we get to see Kyle Larson showcase. We get to see Cup level showcase talent every night of the week. Like thank you, thank you, Kyle Larson. But like hey, thank you. I got I got something for you though. He better not show up around a fucking go kart track. Hey, well if he does, he gonna hey, get his ass handed to him. Hey, if he comes to a pavement wing sprint car race, I'm telling you, boy, he's gonna have his hands full. <laughs> like that's how. Hey, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get emotional. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. But that's what how Kyle, you feel. That is how I feel. That's how you feel. I say it with my chest. I'm just saying what Kyle Larson's doing right now in the dirt. Wing sprint car world, midget, non wing, every like when Kyle Larson shows up, you better be ready because he's ready, his his team's ready. And like, he didn't like what I love about it is that negative happened when he said that thing on iRacing and lost everything. He didn't roll over and die. Yeah. That dude stood up. Yeah. And he, and he showed out. Yeah. And he said, Look, man, you, you can hate me for this. But you can love me for this. And everybody, the love is definitely outweighing the hate right now. Right. And I, I'm so happy for Kyle and Caitlin and Owen, their baby. I just, I think it's, damn, Owen, he don't, he don't know where to go other than on top of the wing and yeah. hold a trophy. <laughs> Poor Owen's getting confused. That some bitch don't know what to do other than when daddy wins. He's like, wait. Caitlin, poor Caitlin's going to have a beer belly by the end of the summer from <laughs> chugging all these beers every time Kyle wins. 24 deep. She's done shot. She's done shotgun a 24 case of Bush Light because of Kyle's wins. Hey, come on. You got a hey, hat shake to that. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Kyle Larson, we appreciate. Hey, racers appreciate you. I know the world of outlaws appreciate it. I know the posse because nobody rolls into posse land. Because they said two or three years ago when it said Kyle Larson versus the posse because he got to because Chip Clear didn't run the posse, like nobody run, like nobody rolls in the posse. like, and it was like fifteen years before an outlaw regular or anything rolled into Pennsylvania and beat the posse. Mm-hmm. Kyle went in there this time and was like, damn near didn't let the posse win. Yeah, like hey, Lance DeWeese, a few other guys, Danny Dietrich, a few guys snuck a win in there. Kyle's like, y'all can have your little fun. Yeah, but, hey. Thank you, Kyle. Lark. Like, for, racers love that shit. Yeah. And it elevates the time. Like I said, and what's NASCAR? And this is definitely pulling the, the cover off of, of the gimmick NASCAR is. They're like, well, we got to do something. Kyle's out here showing out. Well, let's put some lights under the fucking cup cars at Bristol. Like, let's, let's, let's move the numbers back on the fender. Like, that's what you got, NASCAR? You know what you need to do? You need to say you're sorry. And you need to you need to bring the top level talent back to NASCAR, or shut the fuck up and let them live and let them run the outlaw. Like let them do what they do. Yeah, well, that's how I mean. That's how I feel. You know what? Thank you, Kyle Lars. Thank you, thank you, Young Money. But you know what's going to happen if he shows up to an asphalt sprint car race? You hey. know what Troy's going to do? I'm going to bust his ass. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. I would. I've, I've talked to Kyle about this in the past, New Smyrna. <laughs> I said, "Hey man, I hop in my other car. Hop in." He don't want to. I, he, he's got other obligations. I, and you know what? He might hop in a pavement wing car, bust my ass. 
but we're going to find out. <laughs> he, <laughs> said, we're going to find out because the posse didn't want him to come in there and take his cookies. I know they didn't. There ain't nobody. Like I've said for years, I don't think the outlaws are the baddest. I don't think the all-stars are the baddest. I thought in dirt sprint car wing racing, I thought the baddest was the posse. And I still think that. But the baddest is Kyle Larson. Yeah. Dude, the baddest is Kyle Larson. But, yeah, hey, I mean, come find out. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> come find out. Because pavement wing racing ain't cool. We don't pay nothing. He's out there winning 25 Gs, 10 Gs. All, like That's way cooler than pavement wing racing. But, hey, want to come find out, young money. Come on. Hey, you know what he's going to have to do if he shows up? He's going to have to deal with hey, it. He's going to have to deal with me. Like, <laughs> hey, I feel hey. You hey. Put, you, hey, you put that on me, but I'm just letting you know. He's going to have to deal with me. <laughs> hey, so uh, somebody tag Larson in this. No, hey. Tag his old lady. We'll, hey. we'll, we'll send it to I her on Kayla the text. I got Kayla and Kyle on my Facebook. I got him on the Twitter. Like, I love both. Hey, Kyle Larson, he, dude, after I ran second at Bristol, the Gershner. Now, Gershner. Now, oh, I, dude, Gershner won. <laughs> I started 24th in a 25 lapper and ran second. Two weeks later, we're playing beer pong in Granite City, Illinois. Just outside of only Illinois, the home of Levi Steady Eddie Jones. And I'm there with Team 5-6. So Shane Meal and, and Tyler Meal and them. And like, and we're playing beer pong out there, but the frolic. <laughs> and it's Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet against me. And I might have been – my, my teammate might have been Brady Bacon. I don't know who it was. First of all, we did win beer pong. <laughs> By the way, Let, let's put that out there because that's all I that want matters. That, I want that to win. be clear. But the whole every time I went to take a shot, he goes, Gershner. Gershner. And, and, and like what I did appreciate it out of that was like Kyle and all his accolades and everything. He swept fucking four crown and yeah. he's won everything like, <laughs> ever. It, but like the dude was paying attention to pavement wing race and paying attention. He, the guy, he's a student of the sport. Yeah, and it shows because he wins. Yeah, Every, first time at a place. I guarantee his first time at a place that he probably I raced it. He's probably watched every YouTube video. Like the guy lives it. Kyle Larson's got the sickness, bro. Yeah, got the sickness. Got a sickness. That boy's got the sickness. <laughs> but anyways, I I, 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 I tell stay, you what, though. but I still don't like that you said that Gershner shit while we was playing beer pong. <laughs> and if you got a, you got a, you got some shit to say, line up, bro. Line up. Hey, listen. Because I'll talk that shit. i tell you who else got a sickness. Our next guest. Oh, Stephen Nassie? Oh, Stephen Nassie, the unofficial winner of the Snowball hey, Derby. I didn't always think he had the sickness. I swear. Like, and blue I remember, plate. Dude, I, I, I used to wrench on his shit. Old Jeff used to call me, used to help. Like I was like, God damn it, man. This kid don't want to race. This kid don't. Hey. But he evolved. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, he talks that noise. He backs it up. Oh, boy. Hey. I know that he'll walk softly, carry a big stick. Sometimes you can, you can talk loud, and carry a big stick. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Stephen Nasty does that against the baddest in the country. Yeah, everywhere he goes, and he proved that last year. Because in my book, he won every major late model race. I mean, he won Bristol, uh, All he, American. All, he no, he had a chance. All American, uh, Winchester, Snowball. Oh, Winchester, yeah. Um, like he, he definitely won. You know, the triple crown. He had a chance at what I would call the Grand Slam. But, like, and I, and, and I plan on telling him this. I swear, like, anytime somebody talks to Travis Braden, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you won the snowball. Well, didn't Stephen Nassie actually win the snowball? But you got to throw, like, some, some, like, break part bullshit. Yeah. Like, so, like, I feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you know Ricky Brooks gets beat by his wife. Hey. His bedroom's a room of doom. <laughs> so, I don't know who said that. Uh, you said <laughs> I said that. The hell with Ricky Ricky Brooks and the room of doom and all that shit. Like, hey, enforce the rules. Yeah, but don't walk around and try to be the coolest man. Like, like don't don't try to fight. Start a fight in the lunchroom, Ricky Brooks. Yeah, like don't do that shit. Well, like, uh, what I'm gonna ask Stephen about is. He mentioned something to us a few minutes ago when we made sure, you know, just oh, made sure we actually had a guest. Made sure we actually had a guest. Yeah. yeah we, again, we ha I, look. Remember last week or two weeks ago, last show 
We said, oh, yeah. These the worst all- thing I ever did was that live video. Hey, they said, these are all of our notes. Look, folks. Hey, I still got I, th- This is what each button is. I ain't got nail on hey, the notes. Hey, <laughs> as a matter of fact, half, half your shit is you doing your fake-ass autograph. Like, <laughs> like you, we don't have much for notes. We don't plan. We probably should. And, and creeping up around 5,000 views, starting to feel a little cocky. <laughs> like if we want to get to that 10k we want to get that k when you get when you get to 10 that's that k yeah when we want to get to that 10k we might want to start planning and like and we've had some pretty credible guests i mean like kyle bronson steven uh, nassie's coming up yeah i mean hey and in, in five six years from now everybody's gonna be like oh dang y'all had michael goddard on there yeah like and so i mean we've had some guy. we've had some here a hey, colton bettis we was, yep. the, we was the first, okay? Oh, yeah, five near five years from now? Like, damn. See, hey, we're visionaries. Yeah. We're visionaries, bro. See the future, boy. Hey, we... we <laughs> you have, know what I mean? We, we, yeah, we, we're Miss Cleo right now. So, <laughs> hey, look, we're out here giving you all the future. You're welcome. Like, but Stephen Nasty, still young, mm-hmm. still doing his thing. Yep. Who knows where he's going to go? But if you want to run a pavement late model... You have to deal with him. You go out to deal with him. Hey, so listen. And the boy's got the sickness. Oh, he got a sick. That boy's got the sickness. Hey, so we're going to take a quick break. Uh, We're going to come right back. We love Stephen Nasty. Hang on. Let me see here. He said, ready when you are. So, Oh, okay. We're we're going to. Then we got props. (laughs) Oh, we got props out here. I I, I felt it go off. I was just making sure it was Stephen. I I was making sure he wouldn't be like, hey, man. Sorry, uh, y'all oh, dumbasses I'm, took too long. Yeah, I can't I'm do no, it. I'm in Nowheresville, and my Boost Mobile won't pick up. I Man, I just got this new Cricket phone, and the way my bank account set up. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. No, so, that's, that's okay, because I got some shit to talk to Steven myself. Yeah, so we're going to talk to Steven about this Snowball Derby deal, uh, and he actually mentioned something about a setup that was stolen. We're going to talk to him about that. We're going to talk to him about... Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. And we're gonna oh. ta- we're gonna talk to him about uh, what he's done so far this year and his plans for the rest of the year. So y'all sit tight. We'll be right back in just a few short seconds after I flash this beautiful screen up that says, "Make sure you're following us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook." This guy learns one thing on YouTube, and he wants to shout it out before he. All right, go ahead. OnlyFans, uh, yeah. all that stuff. So we'll be right back. <laughs> So how about the guy we've been trying to get on the show for a while? He just texted me and he said he's actually got a free. Well, okay, so we. So, so his Boost Mobile is hooked up to the the Wi-Fi. He's not. He's in, got the Wi-Fi at the at the Best Western. Yeah, he's not in BFE Pennsylvania anymore. We've got him. I'm about to call him. He is was he, like, "Is he in Pinellas Park?" He might be. We'll ask him. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we always call him last minute, but we finally got him. So here we are. We, we were did about, about twelve minutes of planning for this. We're ready to go. Yeah, <laughs> we we're about to bring in the Mister Stephen Nassie. What if they don't answer? <laughs> and hello. Steven Nassie, you are on bench racing finally, my friend. What's going on, man? Hey, How y'all doing? You made it. It's about time. Man. Yeah, you, y'all only hey. give me about an y'all only give me about a ten minutes notice for this show. <laughs> no, I'm saying you can put this back on your hero card now. Yeah. You've been yeah. on bench racing. Yeah, you got thrown out of Ricky Brooks tech shed and you've been on bench racing. Hey, congratulations, son. You made it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I, I got a career highlight going on right here. So uh, obviously, the elephant in the room is. I mean, I know it's kind of old news now, but uh, I think you know we kind of. It'll figure, never be old news. We we kind of figure something out uh, from Stephen in our two minute uh, conversation, our two minute text conversation. He might want to touch on. So, oh yeah, the unofficial winner of the snowball derby. Well, hey, this is the way I look at it, though. It could be worse. He won, right? Right. He got out, got to kiss the snowball. Right. Got to do the deal, the dance, and then and then get, you know, get shit on 
you know, by that. They didn't even have my name for the trophy. What are you talking about? Well, they hey, didn't have my name. bro, it's a they setup. Didn't have my name it was a setup. We know, but I mean, it could be worse. Yeah, you, you could be landing. You could be <laughs> landing Castle. <laughs> you could get turned yeah, around going in. You could be that. turned around and going into three by Johanna and not even ever get to get out and say nothing. Yeah, like so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at least you got to cross the line. So, so hey, to get thro- to get thrown out, you got to win. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey, so Steven, l- let's talk a little bit about that and kind of how that went down. I mean, we can obviously we, can we talk about my snowball derby knowledge for a second? Like, goddamn, like, like I mean, I know this shit. I, okay. I went to one. Hey, guys, Troy knows about the snowball derby. I'm the di- end. Hey, I'm diversified. So he I'm said, uh, "No, hold on. This is Troy DeCare's words himself. The slow crawl derby." Hey, <laughs> bro, there was about two and a half hours. I was just like, come on. <laughs> like, hey, no offense. The coolest thing for me was watching those pit crews. Yeah. And, and we could touch on that because I know you got some shit to say about that. But I'm just saying, uh, I, think I was there just was like, a little bit more that was a lot cooler for you going on. The hey, come on. Around. Bro, hey, I was, I was hatchbacking with Justin Holt. I was out there. <laughs> I, I may or may not have been drinking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, you had a lot going on. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> Stephen. So we, uh, everybody knows. You know, you won the snowball derby, got thrown out. But can you take us through kind of the short version uh, of what happened and and tell us that something that you haven't really told a lot of people, uh, what you told us a few minutes ago. But let's kind of walk through that and then you know drop that bomb that you said you had been waiting on. Uh, you know, well, obviously come across the line first, which is, uh, you know, it was a good, uh, it was a good accomplishment. You know, I didn't have power steering from lap 60, so that was big. Then we, uh, get to the tech shed and, you know, I've been to, uh, I've been through a lot of tech in my life, you know, as whether it's victory lane or, you know, when after, you know, being top three or, or just pre-qualifying yeah, or so whatever it may be. Models, there's some pre-tech that's a bit. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we've been through a lot of tech. I have never in my life, and nobody, neither has anybody that I've asked, been to tech, and they've been like, take your tires off and pull your calipers off. So that was the first red, you know, red flag to us that something was up, you know, just gave us a kind of eerie feeling because that's not a usual thing after a derby tech. Mm -hmm. So... We had just gotten the help from the Brembo company, and, uh, you know, I was with PFC prior to that. Um, You know, I just didn't feel like I was getting the same help and treatment as some of the other PFC people. Um, And, you know, I'd race race with, uh, you know, I race with a lot of them. There's a lot of people that are on that PFC train, but there's a couple. The thing with that, sorry to cut you off there, but the thing with with, with that is, is, like, I'm a huge, I'm not big, because I went straight from go-karts. To big cars, so like brake pedal wasn't. Something we were taught, you know, put your foot on the brake. Your dad WD forty the rotor. You didn't learn a lot of that, but you work as much on making these cars go fast as you do stopping them. Stopping them is a huge deal, especially oh, for, for two hundred sure. laps at Pensacola when the tires are going out, trying to get them to stop square to maneuver under people. Like the, it's just as important as going fast. So right. Like so, yeah. If you're not feeling like you're for getting sure. the love, you got to go to where you get the love to be feeling comfortable. Yeah. Exactly. And it just came into the point where, you know, Brimbo was 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 willing to help us and, you know, give us stuff to try and, and come around and, and just work with only us around the track, you know, not walk around with everybody else, uh, you know, that we're racing. And to me, that just makes me more comfortable, you know, and kind of a company like that kind of puts all of it in you. Not that they're trying to be in late model race and really big or anything like that. You know, Brimbo is a huge company and, uh, you know, I'm thankful to get the little support that I do. And I just have a very good relationship with this guy Gator and he works with them and, uh, you know, he's, he's helped me out a ton. So long story short, Brimbo gives me breaks to try, you know, um, and really helps us out. We start, you know, working with the pads and things like that and really get the car stopping well and, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we work on that side, getting the tech, they take the calipers apart. And I guess there's a titanium cover that goes over the piston, little titanium cap. And, uh, you know, it's about the size of like a, a coin dollar. Um, oh, I you see. Know, they posted that shit on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, you can say it, it's, it's, it's a it, chicken it chip part. Heat. Don't get me wrong, you know, it deflects heat from from the brakes and it makes your brakes a lot cooler and, uh, you know, just it really helps out with cooling your, your brakes down. But at the same time, when if you see somebody glowing the brakes at Pensacola, 
they are in the back. You know, they are not somebody that's running the top 10, top 15. That's not an issue at Pensacola. You know, that's an issue at a bull ring. You know, mm-hmm. that, that would really help somewhere that where you're on the brakes hard and for a long period of time. And at Pensacola, you're just on them for, you know, a couple car lengths set in the race car. And, you know, the longer you're on them, the more you're killing your speed. There's a lot of yeah. grip there. Brakes aren't a half wide. mile issue unless you're at Martinsville. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, that ended up happening, threw us out. You know, I was very upset, figured it was, you know, cause we had just left PFC, you know, that season we we're really winning the big races and it was a big hype and, you know, PFC had sponsored the, you know, speed 51 or whatever it may have been. And I don't know, you know, you hear a lot of things and I don't know what really happened. I still stick to what I say with, with something happening. Definitely they knew that that was in there and that's the first thing they went to. Exactly. I mean, even, even Travis Braden, you know, who ended up getting the win. If that's like, I mean? They should have made it look like they weren't looking for that and that was like the, yeah. fifth, the fifth or sixth thing they looked at. It's like, hey, maybe look at the damn motor. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, look at some other right. shit, but it's like, when they're like, hey, you know, pop, pop your shit the, off, and then you look at it, and you're like, come thing on, is, man. Is how, how did they even test it for titanium? They had a tester there. That's a that's a different kind of test. You can't just, it's not some simple, Like, you stick know, a magnet to it type deal. Yeah, exactly. It's not something like that. So, you know, how how did he test it? How did he know? And, and he knew because he already knew that that part, it was already in the description of the calipers and the build. But to be honest with you, the, 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 the boxes that we got, with those calipers and all those pads and stuff, they're not new boxes. I mean, this is old stuff that we're running. It's not it's stuff that we're getting, and you know that that's not out brand new. You know, looking all you know shiny and whatnot like PSC. And so the, the caveat to that whole deal, like where I look at it, is is like I look at like if that big pileup didn't happen at the end, mm-hmm. I'm like what if Jeff Shochet there takes the win or that other little kid or whoever, yeah, like, who, like who Tom also were running here. the same exact shit you were. Yeah, like what happens then? Yeah, like, I don't you think know? it would have been a big of a deal, you know. No, and, I, and I we, don't. we had some kind of beef, and you know, it just wasn't a very comfortable situation around the pits that weekend. And what I was getting to is the funny thing is, is that they threw me out for the titanium and that, which I don't know how they searched that, but the cover that goes around the rotor is literally a thin shield it's a titanium shield, and every one of the Fury cars, a, a majority of them, run them. And they like literally, there's so much titanium in, in in these race cars. It's stupid. Every DEI transmission that comes out is a ti- has titanium in it. We talked to the guys there. Like, there's so much thing, so much that has titanium. It's like it doesn't make sense. And the rule is a body rule. Right. So we we tried to move on from that. And what you were saying, I hadn't really talked about was if everybody looks at the rules prior to the snowball derby, they'll notice that there's no mention of only having one spring per shock on each, you know, side of the car. Now, well, does it, does after this, after the snowball derby, that rule comes into effect. Right. Well, me and my team had started playing with that, you know, a season and a half prior, and it took us. And a he's good talking six about months. stacking springs. Yeah, double like, stacking springs, which I feel like know. is a smaller window. Than, than depending on a bump or even a bump spring. Right. Right. But, and you're but, really talking about how much is a spring? 60, 70 bucks? You're talking that for each spring on the right. end. How much will you spend in coil binding, testing, trying to get that just right? Right. And, and the, the, the thing about landing and like with a, with a stack spring, what I found when working on dirt lane models and stuff is like there's a lot of stored energy and stuff. And, and getting the car, like, you know, if you got to get behind somebody and you can't run it off in there full of air, full of downforce – you know, and manipulate the car to get it to where you need to get that load number to drive that tire to turn or to do whatever, you know, you, you might lose the front end. It takes a lot more work to get a stack spring or for, this is for the people at home too. Cause I know, you know, and I'm, and I'm right. talking to, to Dan well, Forth, but and, to get a stack spring to do what you want it to do. Or, or like if you get in a situation where you got to lift tw- 20 feet earlier because of a lap car or something, but you can still keep your nose. You know, like and, and things exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. And there's it, it keeps the nose from slamming the ground. It keeps it always at a neutral position to where it doesn't there's not a lot of movement in the front end of the race car. As far as when you're coil binding or something like that, it's so aggressive. And you don't get as much lift and like you don't get as much lift, so you don't get as much droop and drop into it. it, it, it like exactly. It's, but it takes a lot and of work to find that out. It. it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you know take, what? Oh, it it takes shit. a lot of work for to to figure out coal binding a hundred percent. 
it takes a lot of work for for anything like that. Yeah, but we're, stops, they say they, they said something, you know, about it cutting costs. I, I just don't see that's where horse it cut shit. costs. Yeah, yeah horse because shit. you know what, running a second spring, like you said, is sixty or 60 seventy bucks. bucks. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. running but running a bump spring with a preloader, preloader is one hundred eighty bucks. Exactly. Bump spring's fifty bucks. But coil binding, if you got to have a you know one with a pigtail or progressive spring, well those fuck if you could if you go order some shit from from Renton or from Swift, like that shit ain't cheap. And there's people having some that are like half titanium, and then half what like there's there's a whole lot of shit. I mean, I my mind was blown when I got dealing with Scott Bloomquist and them and on the dirt side, not even the pavement side. Yeah, but like dude, them Renton springs and Swift springs and all that shit that ain't cheap. But yeah. but stacking a spring, no, hell, stacking hell a spring no, is cheaper. Cheap. I think it's cheaper the way you went about it. It's a little bit more. For sure, it's a little bit more elbow grease. Work. Yeah, yes, like so exactly. And, and to and me, that's like that, that's what they should promote. They should promote. They should promote that. Like they should be like, hey, look, this is cheaper. But if you want to work for it, because like not a lot of guys have money. But some, but if you got time, you want to put the time in and figure. And you know, right. you got you got to go somewhere and suck ass. And like try some shit, or you know, test all day. Maybe buy some new tires, do whatever, and test and test and test. And then when you finally get it, like you deserve to reap those benefits. I believe right. that's what yeah. we do this and for. That's exactly what we do this for. We're supposed to take these all exactly. of the same template and make it work better than the next guy. Yeah. So it ain't like we went and tested on this. Uh, like it, we don't do a lot of testing. That's our thing because it's boring to us. When you go out to a racetrack and you're just out there by yourself, and well, and I you, know, even, you have to have the right temperatures, and you know you always race at night usually, unless it's a big, big race, right. and usually they end in nighttime. So like when you go out in the heat of the day, especially in Florida where we live, it's it's and, you know it doesn't make sense really to go test. So well, we and went to be to a clear, lot of races. To be clear, and, what I meant by testing was you tested it in race scenarios. You went and threw away a race trying some shit. You went somewhere and ran sixth where you probably could have ran second or won the race on a normal deal, but you were looking right. for something six, eight months down the road. You're like, hey, we're going to exactly. go try this. We're going to go try. Because like for dirt late models, it's hard to test because what well, you go there on a Sunday and it's a dust ball. It's in the middle of the sun. It's like it's not rubber down. There's not 40 cars on the track. It's not the same temp. Like you said, you can't get the same load numbers. You can't get the same travel numbers. You can't. So really, the only way to do it is old school OJT on the job training. Yeah, like you got to go out exactly. there and run it. And like, because I used to do the same thing. Like when I was, I had a series that I was going for the championship, and then like I'd go run this like thousand dollar to win series, and I'd run like ninth, and people are like, "Well, what the hell?" Yeah, like, and it's like, "Well, no, I was trying some shit." Like, yeah, and, but you got to, you yeah. got to do that. You got to keep progressing because if you just sit there and run your same package, your same shit, then you sit there and you wonder why you're behind. The, so, bub, the bubble pollards, the, the somebody Travis else Craig. is working. Yeah, that, somebody else is working to get to get past you, and all of a sudden you're going to show up one day, and and the shit that you've been doing ain't ain't, ain't working no more. That's because while you were sitting there chilling, thinking you had it made, everybody else was out there working trying uh, to find an a extra twenty five hundred to win or a five grand to win. You go try some shit, and then like all of a sudden it leads to that snowball derby. Which the, let's be clear, the snowball derby is all about the prestige, the lineage. The ego, like mm -hmm. you do that because you ain't making money. You know how much tires they spend? They spend more money in tires that weekend than that purse pays. The, and like that's the, the snowball derby thing, should though, pay a hundred grand, teams in my opinion. That have fifteen sets of tires, but me and my we got we go with two. We literally mocked up two times the whole snowball derby weekend, and I guarantee you that is probably the lowest amount I've for a front said, running car to to go. I seen sets of tires that were on set fifteen at the Derby. I've been to you know one. How, one like derby. how? Yeah, like I, I'm not into that, and maybe that's why no. I don't qualify good. But I had a really good race car, and I think exactly. if I had power steering, I might have won it straight up. Yeah, because we all know you're a weak I think bitch. Jeff kind of threw it away because he had the lead on Majeski and and threw it away on a restart. Majeski, that's that name I was looking for. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, yeah. you know, we're so the if only you win the snowball, you might break and even. They took it. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean. Yeah, it no, simply I'm, comes down to that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. So but they, holding that, holding in, that, holding that snowball's price. Yeah, so they ended up, they ended up taking that, the, not only the win, but but your your setup that, like you said, you've been working for a year and a half for. So, right. and what sucks um, about didn't that is come in till the season started. So and me and right. my team are sitting there scratching our heads, and it's with the, you know, they made up a deal called the Short Track Alliance. And it's like Bob Dillner and, and uh, you know, even Bubba Pollard, he's on it supposedly. And, 
and like it's this list of people and and that's who came up with that rule. I called every, we called every series and everything, and everybody just kept. You got to challenge that suit. with like, why would they not? Okay, so why are bump springs legal? Like, why is this legal? Right. Why, why are you pigtails? Know, and the legal? crazy thing is, is me and my team, we're not, you know, and it's dumb on our part. We could have kept it a secret what we're doing. You know, you can wrap, you know, your springs and your shocks, and you know, you can hide it and you know, go sneak in your trailer and like. Like a lot of the guys are following Bubba now and covering up all the tires and putting their covers on and not letting people see what they're doing. I promise you, I don't give a shit what anybody's doing. I don't care what they're doing. But me and my guys, we don't think that way. We don't think like, oh, these guys are watching us. Like we need to like sneak this when we're in a hurry and we're on race day and we're trying to get things done. He's watching his mom. Throwing things at it. We don't have time to put a fucking cover on and put the Velcro and, and you know, deal with all that, that shenanigans. And you shouldn't. I, yeah. No. And, and it, that shouldn't matter what it's not really, it wasn't illegal. It wasn't anything super crazy. I'm not hiding it, you know, but everybody started seeing that. And, you know, when we get into rushing things and, you know, get to throwing things at it, leave one out that's uncovered, but, you know, whatever happens and the word gets around that that's what we're running. I don't know if guys went to working on it or what and couldn't figure it out or if just nobody tried it. But Bristol, we literally probably would have lapped the field if I wouldn't have gotten a flat tire at the beginning of the race because we come in. And then Winchester, we led the like record amount for laps led in the race and pretty much dominated it with, I mean, really dominated with the left rear flat at the end. So Yeah, that's what yeah. sucks about them taking the snowball is that would have completed like – Almost oh, what yeah. I would have called the, and we the almost Grand won Slam. The, the All American 400. We were right. in contention for that. Exactly. Got, if you if you'd had the All American Winchester, Bristol, and and the Snowball, that would have been what I called the Grand Slam. Yeah. Like that That would have been because um, I think he definitely, in my mind, completed the, the Triple Crown of, of Crown Jewel events. Um, yeah. oh, and, yeah. and that puts a, that's a big thing. Like, I mean, there's guys who've been doing this a long time who, who you know, and you got to enjoy the fact that your name's in the mix. That mm-hmm. you got to enjoy the fact because, like, not many guys get to at least be in a position where a guy like, you know, and, and it ain't no secret how I feel about Rick, Ricky Brooks and all that, and how you know. But the fact that those people like are paying attention to you, that means you're doing something right, kid. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, you know, it feels good in that aspect, but at the same time, it sucks. It's ass. Like. I tried to, you know, let it go right when I figured it all out. You know, at, at first it didn't sink in at like how much time and, and, and work had really went into it. You know, I live my own separate life on in the real world as far as working construction for my family's company and, and doing that. And, you know, it just didn't have time to sink in until we get to the races and we're trying to, you know, figure out where to go on these, on, you know, the bumps and what to do these days and, you know, coil binding or, or just, you know, pucks and, and, you know, Belleville washers. And it just, it's, <laughs> it's trying to find that feeling again that we had lost, you know, we were struggling with the freeness getting in that had fixed it and it had helped me a lot. And it made me able to where I could drive the car where I want to get in the corner. And now that that's taken away, well, to put it's a wrap- really left me with a sour taste. In my well, mouth. to put a wrap on that one, there's a couple things to be taken away from that. Anytime, like everybody talks about Steve Kinzer, but you know how many rules the world of outlaws have come up with because of Sammy Swindell? So, I mean, basically you can look at yourself like the Sammy Swindell of late model racing a little bit. So there's something for that to be said. It's <laughs> like, if they're making rules about you, it's like you're ahead of them. Yeah. One. And two, you know, just like when Dan Weldon won the, won the Indy 500, everybody talks about, well, you know, J.R. Hildebrand parked that bitch in the fence coming off turn four and then Jamaican Bob slid it down the front stretch and then Dan skated to the win, you know, for his second Indy 500. So everyone talks about, like, it was a little bit of an asterisk. Like, yeah, if J.R. Hildebrand didn't step on his dick, like, he wouldn't have won. Well, anytime Travis Braden talks about his Pensacola, his five flags, his snow, yeah, he is, his name is going to be on the trophy and he's going to do the radio show at that little restaurant and all that shit. But every single time, they're going to be like, didn't Stephen Nassie actually cross that fucking finish line first? Is that how that went? I just want, I, 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 so for the rest of Travis Braden's life, he's got to hear about Stephen Nassie. And you know what? Part of that as a racer has got to get you off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, in a way it definitely does. I, I can't, I can't lie about that. It's just, uh, 
it makes me hungry to go back and do it again. You know, I, I got to get, I got to get that win. I mean, you know how it is. I mean, we all know how it is as a racer. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it's not official until it's black and white. So I feel you. So it is good. And it's actually shame on them. Yeah. Because now, yeah. cause and, now, you know, cause they now feel they bad up. about it. I know they do. You know, Ricky Brooks come up to me after the, after, uh, after all that. And at the Rattler at the beginning of the year in, in March, um, and had tried talking to me about it. And, you know, he, he knows that it might have been performance enhancing, but it's not at that racetrack. Like, he made the wrong move. If he was any kind of smart, he would have went for something different and then came across that and been like, oh, pull those off. Like, tore me down, not just said pulled your tires off I'm low pull key, your calipers off. Yeah, low-key, I mean, because of how I feel about it, is it kind of, uh, you know, it finally put the black eye on that guy. Because, like I said... You know, I feel like so many times he's tried to he's tried to dictate the the outcome of that race, and that shit pisses me off. It's like, man, shut up and let this shit be handled on the racetrack. Like, yeah, I'm so tired. Sure. I'm so tired of one of the most prestigious races in the world. Like, cause it's going to eventually put the deal where people don't want to go do that shit because they're like, oh, well, you could win, but then you got to go deal with Ricky Brooks trying to be a badass. And it's I like, mean, did you guys see the celebration that I got? I mean, what kind of celebration did I get to do for this, the biggest win of my career? You know, I didn't get to go up and hug my family right away, and my guys didn't get to throw water on me, and nobody was close. It was, it's not the same. The way uh, I don't yeah, know what that's, that's all. Bull- hey, I agree. Yeah, you I can't get out. That. Yeah, yeah, that's all horseshit. Yeah. But what hey, are they? What are they trying to accomplish by that? You know what I'm saying? Like, if they want. Uh, they should do it before we get in the cars. Take right. us all with a metal detector, and you know that way we can all that celebrate shit is with pre-race our family tech for me. But uh, I mean, yeah. So well, hey, that's, Steven, the biggest, that's uh, one of the biggest parts of it. Yeah. Hey. So real quick, uh, before we uh, let you go, uh, just kind of go over the year uh, so far and what your plans are for the rest of the year. Uh, real quick, before we let you go. Man, you know, uh, we're just we're just trucking along with the super stuff. Like I said, we're a little bit behind schedule. And, you know, we got that win at Pensacola a few weeks ago, but we didn't do too well on this little three week or what was like a three and a half week trip that we did to Pennsylvania and uh, Slinger and Anderson. Uh, it was just uh, it was a rough deal, and then Nashville we ended up with the blown up crate motor. So um, you know, we're trying to trying to pick up the slack a little bit we've just we've we've been we've been behind and you know we go to pensacola next weekend um i think after that you know i'm gonna take a little break uh you know maybe take like a month off and uh you know try to get my head back in the game and let my guys get to work you know i I have a lot of stuff that's going on in my regular life as far as as far as construction and then trying to get my house finished uh you know i have a lot of things going on there doing a remodel and everything so Right. Uh, you know, I'll be at all the big races and, uh, you know, maybe some more. But, uh, you know, we're just we're going to get back to where we're dominant and uh, hopefully go have some redemption at all these races this year. Right. So what are what are your headliner events for the rest of the year? Just so the folks at home can follow along. Uh, you know, I would say like uh, Winchester 400, obviously, again, and we're going to try to do it's either going to be Bristol or Martinsville because those are on the same week. And uh, Martinsville is a late model stock race. And, uh, you know, I've been working a deal with this guy, Jamie Yelton. Uh, He built a car just for me to run for the Martinsville and, uh, excuse me, um, Martinsville and uh, Orange County. A couple big races. You guys want to sneak out to Kern at all or anything like that? What's that big one in Kern that pays 20 G? Well, Kern, oh, in California. You know, I, I I don't know. We haven't looked at that. That's a super race. The the Martinsville and the, the Orange County, those are late model stocks. So it'd be a little bit different. Right. But, uh, you I know, heard. obviously those all again. And then um, with the Snowball and, and All-American 400, you know, we have a lot of stuff. We're trying to do the Canadian Short Track Nationals, the one that's, I think it's like seventy five or 100000 to win this yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. That, that, what's that a up there by I don't know Delaware? what the deal is, you know. I mean, who knows what's going on? It's, it's uh, I Delaware, mean, Ontario, knows? or something like that. I really don't know the uh, the city. Uh, you know, that's just it's a big deal though. Canadian Short Track Nationals. If you look that up, you'll see it. Oh yeah. Uh, there's a lot of cars that go out there, and and uh, you know we're looking to make the trip. So, uh, but pro race, unfortunately. So we're going to have to go deal with that again. <laughs> but uh, you know, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to take this time off, and we're going to try to get our program. 
What about uh, a couple uh, steps ahead again? What What about moving forward? Because I mean, you you've ruffled some feathers. Like I, I've known you since you was a little kid. Like I, I've been hanging around you since oh, you yeah. was in, in blue plate buggy. And uh, <laughs> no, for real, I used to, his daddy used to have me. I used to wrench on his little dirt buggy and stuff. And, oh yeah, uh, I remember when you used to drive. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, so I used to come over there and work on a go kart and do stuff like that. But it either way, what what's moving? Because you've ruffled some feathers, and and I dig it. And like, but I mean, there's names talking like about you and Bubba. But I feel like you brought a little, a little more light to Bubba because he don't, you know, get out there as much. But like, you know, Dale Jr. Some of these other cats been talking. So like, is there anybody who's like, man, maybe we ought to put this some bitch in a truck? Maybe we ought to put him in a in a expand. Like, is there anybody talking about anything like that? Arca maybe or. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like anything that's really in the works, man. It's just the unfortunate thing that I think everybody is, is kind of coming aware of, or, you know, is already for sure aware of is just that it doesn't revolve around that. Even you guys know, it's just about what you can bring to the table. And, uh, you know, I've had a couple, couple little things that that's not really, you know, I say they're not worth about worth talking about. You know, you guys know how it is. You hear about something, and it's, it sounds really good, and it just doesn't happen. It's well, you don't want to get in a fifteenth place uh, it, truck because you're not a fifteenth yeah, place guy. Yeah, and you know the trucks like nationwide. That's where I would go. Arca, there's no use to spend your money. No, You've seen the payouts. Everybody's well. Yeah, yeah but it's, Arca's it's a, a joke. The only joke. reason I ran that one race is because Pat Jet had that car, and he called me to come and drive it for him. And, you know, had nobody else to drive it. Yeah, this ain't the 1990s Arca. Arca is a complete shit show now. Yeah, no, it's, a it's dog not even worth show. your time. The truck yeah, show, the truck's worth- about getting there. But I was just curious if anybody was thinking about like, hey, man, you know, let's put a guy in here who who, who wants to get You know, the only thing that's come about is like, like I said, like that, well, we haven't talked about the Tony Stewart deal. It's just, you know, that's, that's a really cool deal. And uh, I've seen my name thrown around quite a bit. And I think that would be, that would be a lot of fun. Get everybody in, you know, kind of equal car, you know, back in the day, they would say one of the, uh, one of the cars would be a little bit better than the other. But I think that, uh, you know, I think Tony don't play like that. Tony, Tony what? wants to put him in there and, and let people throw down. Hey, shout out, shout out to the bench racing Twitter page for tagging you saying that you should be driving one of those cars. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, we're yeah, basically no, fucking responsible for there. that. I mean, God there man. were there were a few of them up there, man, and I, I think that that would be really cool. You know, I've heard, uh, you know, I, obviously I deal with some people that kind of are in the NASCAR circle, and you know, I heard that Tony was talking about the the Derby deal, and I know that was a big buzz, and it seems to be that I'm always being talked about some way or another. I'm just, uh, I hope it plans out. You know, it'd be really cool. But hey. you know, I don't know my, my nephews and stuff. They want to see me do that route, so maybe I'll jump on it. You know, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Hey, whether they're saying they're, you're classy, nasty, or nasty, nasty, as long as they talk or, about or you, or that you're son doing of bitch nasty, hey. that son of a bitch in that fifty one. Hey. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I've heard. It, I've heard it all, man. Trust I dig me. it. I, I've heard it all. And the crazy, the funny thing is, is that uh, that the uh, what's his face, the guy that you know was looking all kind of sideways from Josh Brock's crew. He uh he had come up to me after that the one that told me he was gonna kill my kids and kill my family. And wow, all that. damn! Uh, Is that Jason Lester? He, they're like my best buds now, man. I I see I see they come up to me at the racetrack. People all get the time. emotional it's, at this racing deal. It, yeah, man, everybody gets a little emotional from time to time. I've definitely all, all we really want to know about is when you gonna let me run that second car at one of them Showtime races. Uh, uh, man, I can fold like some fingers in hey, for you, like bud. Like I had said, like I had said about the NASCAR, it's it's, uh, it's not about your talent, which we know you got. It's about what kind of money you can bring. So when <laughs> man, you got the money, blows you the let smoke me know. as good as anybody, boy. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, well, I ain't got no money, but hey, hey Troy, Troy Care just got brought back down to earth. <laughs> hey, if you, if you want to bring, if you want to turn one of them supers into oatmeal modified, I'll run it because I, <laughs> I'll knock the fenders off that son of a bitch real quick. Hey, how hey, about we can probably trade something out. With hey. you always running that, uh, you know, the sprint car, we can probably trade out. Hey, I'm uh, ready. A late model race for a, a little sprint car action. I know you you dabbled in a sprint car. I seen you cut some laps. Yeah, yeah, it man. Was, yeah, it, no, wasn't, it like, wasn't bad. It wasn't I bad. Was, uh, they were talking about running Showtime this weekend. I was going to get out there, but I don't know. If it's well, Showtime shut down this weekend. Is it? Well, yeah, that's the damn co- the damn COVID. Well, yeah, it's okay. I would love to trade something out with you. Cause I'd, yeah, like, I'd we'll like to figure see something it. out. I'd Maybe like we could do like it. a little five hundred for uh, a late model race. Hey, we can work something out. Cause I hate <laughs> the damn little five hundred. You could run that bitch for me right now. Hey, why? <laughs> I just gotta ask you something. Why don't you go to the Chili Bowl or something like that? I've, I've run four of them. 
Uh, well, why don't you go? I mean, I ain't never heard of it, so that it must have not went very well. Hey, like, what the hell first of all, on? first of all, maybe you must give me have, in a chili bowl ride. First of all, maybe oh, I could do that quick. I can get you a good chili bowl ride for five G's. Like damn. <laughs> No, but oh, I, uh, no. We're, I, I thought a, we're trading here. We we're can. Try, I know. I'm saying I can, money. You bring a big money. I can. I can handle it. I'm just saying. I ran. I ran into, I did all right my first time. Uh, maybe you want to watch episode two and check man, that shit no, out. I know that stuff <laughs> is tough. But no, man, I, I, I got. I got, I got a couple of heat race wins at the damn chili bowl. Come on. But uh, well, all right then. So then we're going. You're you're going to take me and yeah, be the driving coach. And no, we'll well, I ain't gonna drive we'll a driving coach, but I can pile. help get you in a good car and I can help take care of you. I can. Hey, you can at least help me drink a few nights before Shit. the night before. Hey, you know? I can put you to work. Hey, son. he keeps. Hey, Troy keeps saying he's running the chili bowl this year. And I'll I'm run it. Right I'm now. gonna run it next year. If, I'll run it next year. Yeah, if if he runs it this coming January, we are uh, we're taking a company trip out there. The whole company's shutting out for a week. Oh man, and we're gonna, we're gonna listen. If you're running it, you find me a ride for five grand and i'll go out there and oh, it's a decent easy. ride and i'll go run that's cake buddy i did the chili bowl is a blast it's a lot it's a lot of bullshit but you'll have some fun um and i think uh, hey man quit burping my damn bad shit. God damn. <laughs> so uh, no we can we can work it out though we can get you in a sprint car get like i always joke about because i mean i busted buggy's balls for a long time he was gonna run me in some uara races but i ain't got no money you know how that shit goes just a <laughs> Broke dick hey, Tampa. we can figure something out. Oh, we can you work know it out. It I know. I know. Uncle Jeff loves me a little bit. He put me. Yeah. In. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all figure something out. But anyway, we can work it out. But hey, I tell you what, Stephen, I've known you a long time, bud. I'm glad you came on. You, you know, you finally made it big time here on bench raising. <laughs> there's there's gonna be there's gonna be tens of people to watch this shit. <laughs> you, you might pick up three Twitter followers, <laughs> and uh, you're welcome. Yeah. I, but I'm hey. just. I'm glad you came on. I'm glad you talk a little shit. I'm glad you're a real racer, for real. Since being little, watching you be a little shit ass, and then turning into what you did, I mean, I appreciate it. I mean, I, a couple times I want to punch you in the mouth, a couple times I want to hug you, like, but I no, like man. it. You're real. Hey, we've You're always real. been close ever since the go karting days. And no, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't look forward to many interviews, but I've been disappointed the last few that I haven't made or even been invited to. But uh, you know. I'm glad we finally made no, it. No, me too, us, buddy. So. It, no, it's yeah. been real. It's glad some things, some things in life come full circle, and I'm glad to see it. And I tell you what, you keep being pain in their ass. The hell with Ricky Brooks. The hell with Bubba Pollard, because he know I, me and him don't drive anyways. But it, but like, I, I hope you keep being a pain in their ass. I hope something works. I'd love to see you in some Tony Stewart shit. But either way, I know that when they roll into a super race, like. I tell everybody, there's certain cats that got the sickness and mm. certain people that got to deal with. And, you know, when you roll in there, whether you can classy, nasty, whatever the hell you nasty, said. Nasty, nasty. And whatever the shit, all that, like, they're going to have to deal with my boy. Yeah. They're going to have to deal with him. Yeah. Like it or not, nasty's going to be there. And I like it. And, you yeah. know, you and your daddy, I love Jeb. I love your sister. I love all of them. So, uh, I hope, I wish you the best. Well, um, watch it on my sister now. Take it easy. Oh, hey, no. Nah. <laughs> hey, we, well, hey, she's married with kids now. It's all good. It's all good. But I still love her. I still love her, Chrissy. But, uh, hey, hey uh, Steve, yeah, man, no. we, we appreciate it, man. Uh, I, it, it, I've been looking forward to this since, since the beginning. I was hoping we could get you on here. Uh, I'm glad we finally did. Um, but no, nah, this is, uh, this is awesome, man. You know, I, you're a little bit younger than me. So I've, you know, I've been around you for a long time since the go-kart days and seen you go from the sportsman buggy racing out of the Max Bennett camp, uh, up oh, into yeah. the, up into the orange truck that you had. The Winnebago with yeah. a 28 foot trailer playing PS one. Yeah. Eating pizza rolls. Yeah. yeah. The, the blue pizza and white rolls. and red six, nine, all American. Hey, me, me and you didn't have much hey, lead on them go karts, did we? All American flag fire suit. Too. Oh yeah. The old yeah. six, nine. The that was before the 51. Helmet. I don't know where the 51 came. He was the old six, nine. He was then. old six, nine. Hey, Steven, yeah. we didn't, we didn't have much lead on the old go kart back nah, in the day, boy. did we? No, he was, he was, he was, no lead. On the, me and Jeff are greasing them barons. Like, hey, boy, boy was heavy. But hey, he did it. Him, Devin, yeah. Cloud, and 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 Max Bennett. Dude, they used to throw down on that buggy boy. Oh yeah, yeah. man. Like, we had a lot of fun, man. We had like no break, Jake. You know when he oh, come yeah. around, Jake Perkins. Yeah, I mean we. There was a Cole Exum. Cole Exum was Cole a good Exum one. Did his still thing. a dirt racer. He was, you know. Cole Exum was, still racing. That's cool. He used yep. to do his thing. Yeah, he still racing. Yeah, like models. He still wins. You know, yeah. he worked Shout out to Cole Exum's sister. For a while. Yeah. Hey, Steven, man. We're, uh, 
Well, like I said, man, we really appreciate it. this. Has been this has been badass, man. It's been awesome. It's yeah, my, boys, my favorite don't one be so strangers. far. No, uh-huh. we won't for sure. Hey, if you ever want to, you ever feeling froggy, want to jump back in a go kart? Meet me at Dirt Devils one weekend. Yeah, run triple heavy. <laughs> All right, man. Here. Hey, I'm down. I'm still in Pinellas Park. I'll grab a 24 pack and I'll head up there That's with it. my leather jacket that I can oh. into. <laughs> yeah, you might want to get the WD40 out, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but, hey, hey man. Boy, boy, we love you, man. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you, and we'll be in touch with you. You keep kicking that right, ass, boys. and when uh, we'll make something one, happen right? here real soon. Yeah, all right, Steven, man. Appreciate it. Have a good night, man. All Thank right. you. See you. Yeah, see you. You know? That's a pretty badass interview. Hey, Steven delivered. We touched on everything from running junior sportsman champ at Jasper to winning the damn snowball derby. Hey, and he did win the snowball. Oh, he won it. Unofficially. Travis Braden, come talk to me. Hey, yeah, hey. I'm sorry, Travis Braden. Your old lady's hot. She posts all that shit. Uh, you and your hauler or, or your uh, RV and your, and your whatever. But the coolest thing you ever did was run second to Stephen Nassie. With no power steer, might yeah. I add. Hey, and Stephen don't work out, clearly. Yeah. Like, we know that. <laughs> that weak son of a bitch. Like, yeah, so. he just said, yeah, man, I'll come, I'll come run that go-kart. I'll bring a 24-pack. I'm like, but, hey. but, but you, can't, you can't drink before. Like, nah. Was, we, <laughs> I mean, there, there's loopholes to a lot of things. Oh, yeah. I mean, just go behind the pit box. Drink a couple, go hey, crash somebody, and then we'll fight. I know it's a bunch fun. of folks that didn't race sober. Oh yeah, but I mean, I know a couple, and 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 God love them. They're not here with us no more, but I won't say them on this show. You probably know who they are. <laughs> I hear you. So, but either way, Stephen Nassie definitely delivered. Yeah, definitely just and and I've known that boy for a long, and his daddy Jeff, his sister, and them. I've known him for long. Hey, his mama knew him. Mama knew him. <laughs> I, I've been knowing him since he was knee high to a grasshopper. Yeah, I've known that fool. <laughs> but like, what I like about Stephen is like he is a dude. They do come from a little bit of money. Yep. And, and they got a family business, and they choose to spend their money on racing. Yep. And what he doesn't do is just show up, drive the race car. And then ride home in the in the in the bins and do whatever. Like they got a little bit of money, but that boy works. Mm-hmm. They work and they're out there trying to figure shit out, you know. Which is why the whole stack spring thing, which I actually text him some stuff in between on the on the way, like some some ideas I had and some, and like he sent me some pictures and like I'm into that. And like that's what I appreciate about guys like Steven is like he could be a rich kid. It could be, oh, William Byron. You know, just like old, <laughs> just like old, uh, what's the, what's the children's grand boy's name? Oh, Austin Dillon. Yeah, he's like, hey, not bad for a spoon Silver spoon, spoon kid. Yeah. Shut up, you stupid bitch. Well, and he is a little bit of silver spoon. But, like, you know, they, Stephen works. Yeah. And they're out there, and, and he he's taking advantage of what he's been given. Yep. And I appreciate that. And they're out there lining up against the best in the business. Week in and week out, and you know, they got the equipment, they got the resources, they've got, but it still takes talent, right? It still takes a little bit of get the fuck up. Yep. It still takes a little bit of gumption. It's a, some elbow. Like, if you're short track racing, this isn't like oh I, I I'm in a in a KBR or I'm in a Hendrix car or I'm in a you know this isn't a cruise and collect deal, right? Like the boy still unloads his shit, and they go racing. Like, and he, he talks a little noise, but but I always say, like my favorite part of talking shit is backing it up. Yeah. And you know what? If Stephen talked that noise and ran fifth, tenth, nobody would give a shit. But the nope. reason people are talking about him, the reason why he's in the contention to be in one of those Tony Stewart cars, the reason why. You know, people are looking at him for other things. The reason why he is so controversial is because he talks that shit 
and then he's there. Yep. And then you got to deal with him. Yep. Like and, you got that's and, just it. And you know we talk about the or the rich kid thing. I don't know how many years ago it was now at the Snowball Derby, but when he got all how about the pit crew. Well, well, that was yes that, but I was gonna say when he got all squirrel dicked up with uh, William Byron, and he put. See, that, I don't remember William Byron. I remember Stephen Nassi at almost every snowball derby. But I don't remember William Byron. Well, they got all they got wrecked. I don't, I don't know who wrecked who or whatever. But anyways, if I remember correctly, Stephen had that damn thing in reverse, and he waited on him, or either reverse or he had it in first. I don't remember which way he was facing the track, but when Byron come back around. He dumped the clutch and destroyed his shit. Hey, sometimes you got to let him know. And then he did an interview, and he's like, nah, he's a rich kid. I went after him afterwards, and they put him in the black suburban. He's like, I'm going to go home and fix my shit. He's going to fly back to Charlotte. He don't never see that race car again. See, I dig that shit. Like, because there's a lot of guys in this racing game who got money. Yeah. But there's few people who got the money and got the sickness. Yeah. Like, and I appreciate the sickness. And you know what? Everybody who doesn't have money, like, we hate on the people who do. Yeah. We hate on, we envy that situation. But you can't fault the guys who got the money and the same passion and right. the same sickness. Right. And like I said, it. I've known Steven since he was a little boy. Like, I've known his daddy a long time. Yep. I've known him. And if he was the cat who showed up in his mommy's bins, got out, ran the race, wrecked some shit, and then left, I'd be the first one to tell you, you know, the hell with that Stephen Nassie. Yeah. I would. Yeah. And, and but I care. I, I see what he does. Yeah. I see, I've seen it. I've been there. I've been to the track. I've watched it. And I appreciate it. I really, like, and it, and it took me a long time in my racing to be able to appreciate kids who have every avenue available to them, but also take advantage of it. Because there's a lot that don't. Yeah. There's a lot of rich kids out there just re- – John West Townsley. Yeah. Like, out there just a bunch of fucking squirrel dicks. Out there on, like, that, on that fried just, chicken money. Just cobbing shit up <laughs> who don't care about nothing. Like, but you know what? I, I, I know Steven. I know them, and I know he's working. Yep. And I know he's out there trying to help. The, like, there's guys, he's got a crew chief just like everybody else. Because you, if you're a driver, you're a driver. You, you can't be a driver and a crew chief. There's no more Ricky Rudds and Alan Quick. Like, it, racing's evolved. Yep. But he's out there working with a crew chief, working with stuff, telling them with the feeling, telling them this. Like, and, and you can tell by the way that interview went. Yeah. Like, he, he's got passion for it and he cares. And he, like, he loses sleep over it. Yeah. I can appreciate that. You know, you, know, what, you know what it's called when you lose sleep? It's called the sickness. It's called the sickness. That boy's got the sickness. Hey, I, I love Steven, man. And like we, we touched on a few seconds ago, you know, the damn – I talked about the William Byron thing, but <laughs> he, he's he got the sickness so bad that he tried to beat a tire changer's ass on his own pit crew yeah, no, at the, a snowball. Like, hey, my daddy paid you to do a job, do a job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, hey – it, you expect this out of me as a driver. I expect this you out of the crew. Like, and, and if you're going to show up, do a job, you don't, if, if you're getting paid to do a job, you better do that damn job. And what he said in that interview, he said, man, he said, I want to beat that guy's ass, left my tire loose. And hey, it just like, how do you think a crew member would feel if he went out there and the zipper fell down and he just stepped on his dick leading the snowball derby? But right. that didn't he'd, be happen. Like, he'd be like, man, I changed all these tires. And then that squirrel dick mess it up. Yeah. And it's easy to blame the driver. It's easy. Yep. And, and like, and I don't fault Steven for voicing his opinion on both sides. Oh, because, I love it. Love no, it. Because like I said, it, they expect greatness out of you. You expect greatness out of them. And as a driver, what you want is the only thing that's acceptable. And I wouldn't even say it's acceptable but the only thing that's okay or helps you sleep at night is if it's your fault you lost. Yeah. Not, oh, we didn't have enough motor. Yeah. Damn, if we didn't have another set of tires. Man, if we'd have bought a crew, like, who could change tires faster. We, when every component is built to win this prestigious race and somebody shits the bed, 
Yep. Well, guess what? Somebody's going to have to pay for that. Hey, as far as I you know what? That guy shit the bed and he still got a check. Yeah, as far that as That guy I, still got a check. As far as I'm concerned, that tire changer, in the heat of the moment, in the snowball derby, he pissed down his leg. He choked. Pissed down his leg. Yeah. Hey, you, sh- hey, you shit the bed. Yeah. Hey, Steven should be a two-time. Hey, I, I feel like he's going to win the snowball derby. Oh, I want to go this year just for that. Like I, I, I want to go to Snowball Derby just for the party, and if Steven happens to win, hell yeah! Oh yeah, well hey, actually, cause it, my boy Justin Holt, we used to he had he had a, a old hatchback uh, <laughs> Prius, we and we was hatchbacking, is what he called it, and we was out. Hey, it was me, and we had Steven out there, a couple Brandon McReynolds, a few other cats. B Mac, dude, we was getting down hatchbacking. Hey, listen, I've shout out J Ho. It, Justin it, Holt. It's funny. I've got a, a DM from Nassie. It was, it was the year after he tried to tried to fight the the crew, or some shit. Whatever happened, and I've got a. I, I went to message him a while back about the show, and I was like looking through there, and I was like, damn, it was right after that it happened. I had like shared the video, and he he DM me, and he was like. Bro, you want to come work security for me at the snowball? And I'm like, I'm not gonna beat nobody's ass. Hey, and he was like, Brian, bro, Ryan Danforth wouldn't buzz a grape in a fruit fight. Exactly. He was like, bro, but you're big. Just stand in front of me. Hey, I'm like, uh, hey, <laughs> if you wear a two X, you're hired. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> okay. No, I'm no, with but, that. Hey, but I'm telling you what, wrap this up. Shout out Stephen Nasty. Shout out all real racers. Shout out Young Money. Yep. We look forward to the next. The next show should be good. We're gonna have my boy. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and nap. This is how ahead of times we are. We're going ne- episode ten. Wait, hang on, hang on. Is that ten? I don't know. Right, this is nine. Yeah, it's ten. Okay, ten. Oh, Johnny Benson, uh, Valvoline, yeah. uh, Scott Riggs, maybe <laughs> Scott Riggs. Come on, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Okay, it, the ten to me was like. Dave Blaney, 1994 War of Outlaw champion. Oh, I got you. The rat bag Tyler Walker. I got you. 2000 Bush Series champion, the number 10 Nesquik car, Mr. Jeff Green. Jeff Green. Come on. Okay. (laughs) Dude, this guy is like NASCAR (laughs) fanboy. But anyways, listen. We're going to have Shane Meal. Okay, we're gonna have him on the next one. That's the plan. No, that is it's happening. Well, we gotta tell Shane not to work out that day. No, well, I mean, dude, he's a can we be fair, he's a fucking quadriplegic, okay? I, no, and, I, and dude, he gets tired, okay? But yeah, I'm just but, saying he's gonna be on here. First dude ever to win a truck race in that in the in the blue fifteen threw his damn helmet over the fence at, at Vegas. I can't wait for him. I want to spoil it, but I can't. I can't no, wait for him to tell the Vegas story. The Vegas story is good. God, hey. See, we, we've been supposed to have Shane on a couple of times, but, and, and, and like, like Troy said, I, I was making a joke, but he, he when he does, there on certain days, he does these workouts, and he just gets like. Dude, he's a quad. I I, get according it. to him, he's the Tom Brady of quadriplegic. <laughs> but he's out there working out, trying to learn how to try to walk again, live again. Like, he's doing his thing. I spent a lot of time with him when he, how he said, when he had legs and when he didn't have legs, like, and I, that's not me, that's him. So that's not no politically correct shit. El Sweet Dick Willie. When we have, when we have Shane Meal on, it's going to be epic. Like, my boy, dude, he tells some stories and he tells them well. And yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully, you guys can sprinkle in on some of these comments, some other topics you guys want to hear. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube page, uh, I think we're up to five YouTube subscribers. <laughs> we appreciate all five of you son of bitches. Uh, <laughs> and that's actually free. Our OnlyFans is three nine nine a month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OnlyFans, you can see Brian's butt. Uh, it's all good. But, you don't, uh, even, but hey, you don't week, even know what Troy's got on there. It's actually going up tonight uh, at midnight. <laughs> hey, hey, if you... Tell Shane Meal about the family fans, and he'll show Sweet Dick Willie on here, and we'll be real good. <laughs> but anyway, so if you guys could chime in on some topics, we need some help, some things you want to talk about, some things you want to hear. We love the feedback. Hopefully, we get to hear the shit you guys talk about, Nasty. Because <laughs> anybody wants to talk some shit about Nasty, I'm ready. 
Uh, Do but, that in the comment section below. Yeah, or you could DM me. What's up? But uh, just know you're gonna get screenshotted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this ain't Jason Lester. Hang on. So <laughs> we're ready. We're hopefully next week. You guys tune in. Episode ten. We made it to ten. What, double digits. Hey, we here, bro. Yeah. This is this is it. So we're heading down to the Deca. Yeah. That's some Greek shit. The fuck. Yeah, Deca ten. So All we're right, here now. Right. Guys, tune in next week. Shoot us some stuff in comments. We appreciate you. Follow us Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, yeah. Tw- <laughs> what? No, nothing. Oh, what? Uh, Brian's Bumble. <laughs> what? What? Anyways, but follow us. We appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. What's, what's that? Bumble? Uh-uh. God damn it. Shut up. Press the button. <laughs> hey, listen. Like he said, make sure you're following us, all the bullshit. Hopefully next week, my boy Shane, or his boy Shane, uh, I'm I'm a fan of Shane's. Hopefully he doesn't, you know, go to sleep sleep at eight o'clock that day. Uh, We want Shane on. Uh, We've been trying to do it for a couple episodes now, but we finally got nasty on. So we should start to, you know, kind of roll through that order. We've been wanting. We got Bronson. We got some. We got nasty. Hopefully we can get Shane Mill. Keep going. Any squirrel dick you want to see on here. Just know anybody we bring on the show is going to have a sickness. Oh, yeah. They're going to have a sickness. And ain't going to be no pretty boy that comes on here and be like, yeah, I just want to thank my mom and dad. No and squirrel like, dicks. Yeah, no, no squirrel squir- dicks. This is a no squirrel dick zone. Yeah, you hey. got to have a sickness. No- hey, how about a shirt? How about a shirt? For what? The sickness. The si- hey, that's okay. Hey, shout out Cobb of the Week. Cobb of the Week is uh, the officials at 417 for the sprint car race, whatever the hell went on there. Shout out them. I was told, oh, my God, I got to say this. He's going to hate me forever. I was told that the call of the week was unloading an outlaw four at Hendrick County Motorsports Park right next to a badass brand new late model. And he backed it out of the trailer and put the quarter panel through the door all the way down that late model. Come on. Fuck that late model. Hey, and guess what? They got rained out and they didn't get to race. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's Cobb of the week. <laughs> That might I might be Cobb say, of the month. I won't say who it was. You know who you are. Some Somebody may or may not have slid me a 20 to say that. Do I get 10 of that? Yeah, you get 10. All right, come on. I mean, you got $14 wine, so you're technically like six. But like, Hey, <laughs> run it. Hey, Put it on my tab. God, he's going to hate me for saying that, but I won't say his name. I'll end it on that. Y'all make sure y'all watch next week, episode 10, Shane Mill. We're going to kill it. Uh, y'all squirrel dicks, tune in, share this shit. Love y'all. See you.